my name is uh, Rula Halawani. Um, uh, I am from Jerusalem. I was born in this house and I was raised in this house. Uh, my family used to live in the old city for uh, hundreds of years. My grandparents came from the old city and they moved into, they bought this land and moved into this house in 1958 uh, before most of us were born and uh, we have been living here uh, since then. Um, when Jerusalem, when East Jerusalem was occupied, uh, I was uh, three years old uh, in 1967 and I, you can say like I can't remember Jerusalem not occupied. I was too little. I don't even remember the 1967 war. Um, like you can say, I lived most of my life under occupation. What, is, what, what does that mean to be to be in a city on a daily basis? To be in a city that's occupied and kind of divided. Actually, it is sad. It is, it is really, really sad. Jerusalem is such a beautiful city. But you walk, like, in the city, you don't... Uh, like, you don't... Even though it's yours, it's mine. It's my city. And my family had been living in Jerusalem for hundreds and hundreds of years. Like, we don't remember where, when they lived in the city in the beginning. But every day, you know, you look around you, it is sad. Like, for example, like just a few years ago, they took uh, the land up there and we have settlers. And now we have settlers going up and down the roads all the time. When I was little, like, I don't remember any settlers in the whole neighborhood. Like, you know, like, like our problem with the Israelis is not the Jewish were Muslims were Christians. It's, it's not, it's a land problem, it's identity problem. And you know, and if they want to keep all the land and they say, let's have peace, I think it's a joke. It is really a joke. And you know, when I was going with the kids uh, to the camp, you know, in the beginning, like I remember myself like teaching the kids, okay, let's give this a chance and things will get better. And then between me and myself, every day going out and taking pictures as a photojournalist, photojournalist, I felt things are getting worse and worse. More of the land is taken. Uh, going back to 1967 borders, forget it, it's not going to happen. Jerusalem is out of the question. Then, you know, like I just had no rule. I had no rule and I decided to continue just as a photojournalist. I always liked kids and I always wanted to work with kids. And in 19, I worked with Reuters until 1998. And, uh, uh, and I worked with Seeds of Peace. I was volunteering around 1997, around that time. And then I decided, you know, I can do both and I don't see the future. And I just wanted to stay as a photojournalist. And in 1998, uh, I was in Hebrew taking pictures, uh, when, and there was a bunch of kids that I used sometimes to play football with them and let them play with my camera and stuff. And we, we kind of became kind of friends. And uh, out of the sudden there was heavy clashes, one of them showed up and started to throw stones. And I, I was really, really worried because I really liked those kids and they were close to me. And then after the sudden, he was shot in the leg. And other Palestinians took him away. I was so happy that he was not uh, dead, nothing happened to him, and he was fine. And I took a picture of him, and he had a bullet in the leg, but it was slightly like it was a rubber bullet. Then after they took him away, like after 10 minutes, he came back and he started to shoot, to, to throw stones. I was really worried, and I took pictures of him while he was throwing stones, then five minutes later, just five minutes later, I heard boom, something like really, really loud sound. I knew it's a light bullet. I looked at him. He was just on the ground. And he was lying on the ground and a stone in his hand. I took the picture with a 300 millimeter and I kind of felt he's dead. And then I went around 
to see him, to see how he's doing. Uh, I didn't care at the pictures because, you know, I started to feel like the kid is dead. Then when I turned around, I found the bullet right in his middle of his head and he was dead. He was, he was you know, like dead. And then I looked at his arm. He had a stone that he had crunched on the stone like this. And uh, I went back to the office and I developed the film and I looked at the three pictures and I just couldn't continue as a photojournalist. Um, actually, I, I still consider myself as documentary photography. Documentary photography is art. Because, because you know, like the memories and what I had witnessed and what I had seen something you cannot erase especially when you see dead people when you see clashes when you see young people being shot when you see stories of land confiscation and you know when i lived the peace process and it there was no peace and you know my experience with this land it's what i could say now about my work is is an experience i see it i live it and I reflected in my photos. Uh, it's not easy. It's not easy. And each time I live like this experience, I get tired. Since I left the photojournalism in 1998, I went back just once when the huge incursion happened in Ramallah. My decision was not to go back to photojournalism. But when this incursion happened, I don't know, I found myself in Ramallah taking pictures. It's, it's really sad, it is really not hard. And that's why I showed the pictures black and dark. Because that's what I had seen, especially when I went to bed. All that I could see is darkness, black, and cold. And since, you know, my pictures talk about my experience and what I see, and I reflected in my photos. I wanted like the observer to to see and experience what I see. And the negative incursion was was a very, very, very hard experience for me, especially when I saw the dead man on the street, because I also knew that man. He was like in his sixties. Uh, he was a very, very simple man. And I saw him did in the same place I used to see him before. He worked in the area. And whenever we, my friends, my colleagues and I went to, uh, to Mukata, to Mukata, to the Palestinian headquarters, yeah, the Palestinian headquarters, he used to come to us and say, what are you doing here? Can I help you? Blah, blah, blah. I really never knew his name or anything, but I used to like talking to him. And it was, it, it was like shocking, you know, like I was walking on the same street and then he's lying there dead. I know he's not a fighter. I know he has nothing to do with anything. It is just like maybe he was wandering around in the morning the same way he does or he used to do before. And, you know, I saw him lying, and I took pictures from the back with the tank of him. And then when I turned around and I saw his face, I said, oh, my God, it's you. It's you. And I, I didn't know. Like, it was so cold. I wanted to cover him. I wanted to talk to him. Then I looked at his body. He had so many bullets. And he, there was three pools of blood next to him and looked at his hand again, it was just like this, just like the same way the boy was lying on the ground. It's just like endless, like story will never end. This is the dead man that I saw in the state. This is before I saw his face. I shot it with the tank and uh, there was a pool of blood and a pool of blood and it was really sad. Arrest everywhere. And this is one of the photos I took in Nablus. Uh, walking in that street was a very hard experience because it was so empty. Um, I'm always scared of empty places. Uh, when I see empty places, I get scared. 
because of what happened to us in 1948, people left and could never come back. And each time, you know, I feel like we have to leave or some parts are leaving. I'm always scared that they will never be able to come back. It is really, really sad, this experience. Even I remember my dad uh, said a number of times, if we die in this land, we shouldn't leave it. Because each time we had left it, we never came back to it. It's, it's better to die in it than leaving it. And whenever I see empty places when I'm walking around, I get really scared. I hate empty spaces. Even though you see a lot of my pictures, you see emptiness. But the emptiness like scares me. You know, like I, I don't understand. Like I really like experiencing everything, looking at everything. I really like, you know, like since I came back to this land in 1989 until today, I don't understand what the Israelis mean by security. I don't understand what they mean by peace. You want peace, you have to give us back our land. You want security, you have to give us our security. Why? Why it is always your security and when we do something we are terrorists and when they do one million things, it's self-defense. Why? Why the world look, like I always question myself, why the world doesn't look at us the way he look at them? Why? Do they feel sorry for them because what they have done for them during the Holocaust? Is this the way, you know, like really, really like, you know, why? Why do 100 Palestinians get killed? It's, it, it's, it, okay, I know it's not okay to many people in the world, maybe just to many of the governments, but you know, it passes. But what, when, when one Israeli dies, you know, the whole world terrorists, Palestinians, why? We're humans too. How can we achieve peace? Like me, I teach young people, and I know how they feel. You know, like start talking to them, for example, about what's happening in the world and about terrorism and about blah, 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 blah. And, you know, they say we don't care. We don't care what the world thinks. You know, like especially for the young people, like, you know, if they don't feel hope, if they don't feel life, if they don't feel the future, they're not going to care for anything else or anything in their lives. You know, they're young, they need to live. They need to feel the taste of life. I don't know. But really, 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 I could never understand the word security. I could never understand the word peace. I could never understand why the world is double standard. Why? I know, like, for me also, you know, like for one person to get killed from each side is a lot. I know how mothers feel when she loses her child. I photograph mothers' grievings over their children. But in the same time, you know, like, like we're humans. We're humans. You know, why is this double standard? It is just like we're sick of it. This another piece was exhibited a lot, but not in the US. Um, I titled it Irrational. It's about the settlements that are being built. And it's also an experience. I was driving on the road to work to Birzeit. And then they were putting caravans for a new settlement. And, you know, I got so upset and mad because, you know, like we're thinking peace, we're thinking to remove the settlements. And here they're expanding, new settlements are being created. And then I decided I want to shoot, uh, do something about settlements. And I titled it Irrational. And, uh, and in my statement, I talked about my memories, how I grew up with the view of the West Bank, you know, shepherds wandering with sheep. And, uh, and now all that I can see is just the ugly monsters that called settlements are being built. And, you know, like to me, like the villages, 
when I look at them, they melt with the mountain. They have been there like for ages, for ages. And you know, they hug the mountain, they kiss the mountain, they're part of the mountain. And then you see those ugly monsters kind of, you know, landed from, you know, they make the country so ugly. And I did this piece about it and I used this kind of uh, camera. And I shot all the pictures uh, while I was driving mm -hmm. from behind the glass. And it was winter. Did you actually go into the settlements and shoot from within, or was it always a distant? Uh... No, no, no. I was driving. I was driving. No, a distance. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, from a distance, just driving. Yeah, the settlements are amazing in terms of like they really kind of they scrape the land. And then I know. And they try to, their best to build them as ugly as possible. Mm -hmm. It really ruins the image of the West Bank. Yeah. It really does. And, uh... Yeah, both, both day and night, actually. You know, uh, the West Bank, the villages, like, disappear at night. Yeah. And the settlements are always on with these yellow lights. There's this weirdness that the presence is constant while the villages kind of melt into the land, like you were saying. Especially at night, they just blend in and they disappear. And then they come back to life in the morning. Like I have been really documenting the wall since they started, the very beginning of uh, building it. But you know, each time I photographed it, I looked at the pictures. Uh, it really, it really didn't show, you know, what I really experience and see about what's happening. And one day I was driving to work and they were just starting to build the wall on the way to Kalandia to Ramallah and they started to build it in the middle of the road you know this road that I drive a lot and I don't know it seems like you have really to get me mad and angry to to create a piece like it has really to get to me when I saw them just working in the middle of the road on this particular road that I always drive to work, I decided I want to do my piece about the wall here, right here. And I started shooting. Then I decided I want every picture to tell a story. I wanted like the stories up to the wall, to what's happening to the land up to the wall. Uh, you know, like there is in every picture a story, but you know, you really have to discover it. You know, I see it. And some people see some of the stories, and some people don't. Like to me, this is about wars. The wars that the land witnessed. And it's empty. Everything is empty. It's this emptiness, you know, that always scares me. I wanted it to be in this space. The emptiness of the people. Actually, this. The idea of this piece came to me when I was uh, photographing the actual wall. And the actual wall, like, I photographed it for a while. When I was, like, when I was taking pictures and watching the, the bulldozers, you know, like, taking off trees and taking off the whole environment, taking everything they face, storing, like, uh, the, the land, its people, everything. I, I wanted to do this piece about the environment around the world. I wanted to trace the environment and, you know, and uh, the nature, uh, um, you know, how it's, uh, the wall, while it's being built as a massive, concrete construction, uh, it just, like, devours and uh, everything around it and... Uh, and I wanted to, to do something about this. I took with this camera a couple of pictures and later, you know, I just put them in, in my computer and I wrote about the environment around the wall, just for me, like, to see. Because it was, like, crazy the way the situation was. And then I went back and I did this project. I 
for days with the same camera I was uh, after the tanks after the bulldozers after the army or behind them and taking pictures like this picture that the you know tanks were working in the land storing the land and I took uh, the picture this one you know too all of all of them this one like you see humans tanks went over humans evidence it's just like the way they go over humans themselves and uh, and so on I, I I'm, I always insist in exhibiting those in light boxes, small, intimate light boxes, and I like them on the floor for two reasons. Uh, not light boxes, uh, sorry, uh, glass boxes. It is just like I want to preserve. I want to preserve of what has been destroyed of the people and the land, and in the same time, I do not want to preserve it. You know, in something non-breakable and something fragile because it's 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 fragile it's already gone even these images they don't exist anymore and i wanted to with them to place them on the floor because i feel like they belong to the ground you know but why small why i mean why not big big enough that they become almost the size of the tank track or something like that why that sense of intimacy actually i like them small mm -hmm. i like them small I like them small because, you know, the scene, the way I imagine it, the tanks are so huge, the bulldozers are so huge, the wall is so huge, and, and you know, these days, like, the huge things, or the people who have the power, or the things who have the power, they don't care for the little things, and those are little things, you know, you know, like, even, like, they look at us, even, we are nothing, we are not even humans, we are little things, you know, and, I, I wanted those to be little, you know, I don't know, that's the way I imagined it.